everyone, I am Rebecca from ChemBits, and today I'm going to do something a little bit unexpected, a little bit different, try something that I haven't tried before, which is saying something, because we are over 350 episodes into Dead Pot Weekly, a series where I try to encourage myself to try new things when it comes to dyeing yarn. My lab partner today, Lindsay Liu, offered me a fun challenge, a challenge to combine two techniques that maybe I wouldn't have thought would go together. And this really got me thinking, because there's so many different ways you can layer techniques to create a colorway, whether you're doing it all at once in one step or doing it in multiple steps. And so I decided to really go for something that I wouldn't necessarily try normally. So today we are going to glaze yarn and then we're going to speckle on top of it to see what we end up with. Glazing is a technique where you get a really shallow layer of color on your yarn. So it looks like you can see what's beneath the surface there and is something really fun and that I really, really love. And normally this is a technique that I might try to do over something variegated or maybe even a little more tonal to start with. But I don't think I've ever tried doing this even on top of something that was already speckled, let alone doing something glazed first and then putting speckles on top of that. I'm not sure what I would think, what I will feel, but it could create something really magical. So let's go for it and give this a shot. And if you are excited about me continuing to challenge myself and push my artistry in new directions, please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss a new video. But now let's do our first step and go glaze some yarn. Today we are going to dye 300 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK yarn. This yarn is 100% superwash merino and I've let it pre-soak in plain tap water for 20 to 30 minutes. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves to measure out and dissolve the dye I want to use for the glazing step. Navy is a color that works so great with glazing just because it does strike really quickly and so I figured let's go for a color that I know works pretty well. Now Swish DK is a yarn base that is a little bit loftier, the twist isn't that high, so it's not necessarily the best yarn base for a glazing technique or the easiest one, but we're still going to go for a setup that I know works reasonably well. I measured out 0.8 grams of the dark navy acid dye and dissolved it in some warm tap water for an unspecified volume of dye. In my 12 quart dye bath, I'm gonna add, well, almost a cup. Let's get the big containers almost empty. I buy vinegar by like the big gallon bottles and it's hard to pour. So sometimes I transfer into a secondary container. But we're gonna add a cup of white vinegar to our 32 cups of water. And then we're gonna come in with our dark navy dye that we just mixed up and I'm just rinsing out this cup. Not bad. And we'll take our dye bath over to the stove. I just turned on the heat, but the dye bath is still cold. And now we're gonna add our yarn. I squeezed out a lot of the water from our 300 grams of yarn, but now I am going to add it to the dye bath, sort of move around so we can get uh, a little bit of coverage and then stop. And I'm now not going to touch the yarn again, even though I want to touch and stir and do all that. But what I have found with glazing is that, well, at least on some other bases, this works really, really well. I just set a timer for 30 minutes for us to wait for the color to absorb as I do not touch things. And so in theory, what is happening to give us the really shallow penetration of color is the cold helps prevent the yarn from soaking up the color too fast on just part of the skein. But the acid is helping that dye strike to the yarn as soon as it sort of hits the surface. 
And so, well, if we end up with navy yarn, we end up with navy yarn that doesn't feel glazed and that'll be okay as well. But it should give us a very soft feeling layer of color on the yarn. Every time I go to glaze yarn, I get a little bit nervous, even when I'm replicating something that I know has worked. The last time I tried this, I used Wool to Die For's Crazy 8 DK weight yarn, which has a lot higher twist. It's eight ply, uh, four two plies all together, and so it's really bouncy. And this works well there. And so these proportions and conditions, maybe a little bit less acid, but are very similar to what I've done in other cases. And so it's either gonna work or it's not. But even when I do with the same base and conditions that I knew had worked, sometimes I'm like, Ooh, is it happening? Is it going to be shallow enough? And then you have that doubt and you know, that's okay. We're going for it. And we'll check back in on that in 30 minutes just to see how much color is absorbed. But then we're going to speckle on top of it, which should look really, really cool. With the navy, the speckles might be really, really subtle and hard to see because the navy may sort of dampen a lot of color since that's deep already, which is another reason why I picked the navy for the first color because a lot of times when I'm going to speckle, I go for something that is either really, really bright or a little bit more soft and pastel so that way the speckles really pop on the base. And so by starting with something deeper, it's going to make that whatever speckles we do really subtle, but I'm still very excited. <laughs> The 30 minutes are about up and you can see we are nice and steamy and hot. And I think at this point I can go ahead and move it. And let's see, there's still like a hint of some color left, but oh yeah, I can see on here. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see, but that looks both dark and not dark. That is really, really nice, okay. I am going to give this a little bit more time um, to see if that residual color absorbs. I think maybe I'll wait uh, another 15 minutes because I'm not sure how long it's been hot. It doesn't matter how much heat we get now because after we speckle on top of this, we will be steam setting the yarn. So don't worry, the enough heat will come. But let's just wait 15 more minutes and see if the rest of that color absorbs. Or if it doesn't, then we'll call it and go ahead and dye our next layer. It's very steamy, so I'm gonna turn off the heat, but I see glaze. Okay, now I just need to try to get all of our zip ties, but the glaze, it's too steamy for you to see, but you see how in some cases the color, rather than looking solid, looks like it's just been brushed on or sprayed on and is really shallow. That's what glazing is. That's the effect that you get. This sort of uneven color coverage, even when you might expect things to be more even. And actually, it looks like those last 15 minutes did what we needed to do because this dye bath is looking nice and clear. But the yarn is still so steamy that I wanna let it cool for a bit so I can comfortably handle it as I internally debate whether or not I wanna do countertop speckles or do low immersion speckles. I decided that we're going to go with some low immersion techniques today for our speckling. I added some of our glazing water to my four inch deep full size catering steam pan. And clearly that water is still a little steamy. So now I'm wondering why I let things cool off as much as I did, but you know, we're going to roll with it. And I'm going to add Lindsay's yarn into the dye bath and we can add more water on it as well. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really curious about what will happen, what we'll see. But I want enough water in here, so that way when I move it, I see some like liquid at the corners. And so I'm gonna get my frosted turkey baster to just add a bit more water. And I'm not, mm, I guess we'll go ahead and heat it up. But then I'm gonna need to put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. Well, I'm already wearing my gloves, but I'll put on my respirator mask and safety glasses so that way we can speckle with some dry powder mixed with citric acid. All right, and I am gonna use two colors. Well, I think at least. We will see, but I've got, in this spice jar, I've got some pink orchid 
mixed with citric acid. And I'm coming in. I was going a little heavy, but sort of speckling it on in some areas. Not necessarily going all over, but you know, doing reasonable, heavy kind of speckles. Of course, I'm not even sure if you can see it. I'll zoom in in a moment. But I've also got some Tangelo, which is sort of a pinky orange. And so, coming in with this, going in to some different areas. Now, because we have enough water in here, it's possible in some places our dye is going to spread and give some gets undertones to our color, but in other cases it may not. So, I'm going to zoom in in a moment, but let me go wash my hands. I think it's hard to get a good sense of the color, but you can see some of these pink speckles that we have. It's just from far away, it is a little less obvious. And then, of course, we also have some more orange speckles as well. I have used these exact same dyes to speckle on top of tonal yarn, or even to speckle on top of white yarn. But I haven't used the tonal that has these, like, shallow feels of the color, where, like, it's all navy, but some areas that are more pastel, you feel like the color is dark, but you see the lightness underneath it, and that's really fun. It's possible that through the course of doing this that maybe some of the navy dye might bleed and reabsorb and maybe it'll feel less glazed than it did earlier. But like in here you can see how just in really small areas there's these shifts in tone and that's like the glaze effect and so I'm very excited to see how this will turn out and look once it's dry. But anyway, I'm gonna wait 10 minutes and then we will continue to add color onto the yarn. I put my respirator mask back on, flip the yarn over to add more dye to the other side. Again, not going for the heaviest all over, but more heaviest speckles in more concentrated areas. Since we have 300 grams of yarn in our pan, I knew that I was gonna to need to do more than one flip to get a coverage that I was happy with. And so after each time I was satisfied with the color on the side I was working on, I waited 10 minutes before flipping and moving the yarn around to add more color. Once I was satisfied with the total color coverage, I waited 10 minutes and then added more water from our glaze pot to have things well submerged and then let it heat for 30 minutes uh, so that way we could make sure everything was nice and well set. It's been over 30 minutes since I last added dye and I'm now gonna turn off the heat to let the yarn cool completely. Uh, maybe not in the pan the entire time, but at least in the pan for a while. The yarn is almost cool, um, but I'm going to take it out to finish cooling so we can wash it. Now we are going to wash, oh dear, the yarn. And to the pan, I'm going to add some dish soap, just a little bit. It does not look like the glaze has been affected by heat setting it in another way. And so that is good. And these specks are so subtle, it's really cool. Now, if you wanted the navy to be more even and to feel less glazed, um, then you could set things up very similarly. Just have less acid in the pot. The high acid is what helps the colors really start striking super fast. Um, but it also depends on the dye color as well, because you've seen me do mix of navy and fluorescent colors that take more time to absorb, and then you get some really, really cool breaking on the yarn, which is fun. But anyway, I'm not seeing any bleeding at all, so I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap, and then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is our finished speckled and glazed yarn. When you pull back, I feel the deep blue with some pops of, well really, it does feel a little bit more orange than pink. I think I went a little heavier with some of the tangelo than I did with the pink orchid. 
And so I see some of those bigger pops that are maybe here and there uh, when I'm standing up. When you zoom in, you can start to appreciate more of those subtle pops of color, those subtle speckles. And you can also appreciate the softness that the navy is on the yarn. It turns into a really lovely tonal, but you can see that it is just like this light glaze. It feels almost airbrushed. Even though we did kettle dye it, and in other circumstances, mainly with less acid and a bit more stirring, we would have ended up with something much more semi-solid slash tonal. The tangelo absolutely dominates, but there are areas where you can see more of that pink as well. I think in general, what I've observed is that the tangelo speckles don't tend to be as sharp as the pink orchid. That pink orchid color strikes really, really fast. And so that is maybe another reason why the pink is more subtle. Now, does the soft, subtle variation of the glaze compete a bit with the speckles? A little bit, yeah. I mean, overall, this is going to be a very subtle colorway that maybe will have tiny little random pops that feel more warm toned versus the cool toned navy we have here, in addition to that tonal variation from the navy itself. But that doesn't make combining these two techniques a bad thing or wrong. It's just a different type of choice. Whether you prefer working with more subtle colorways or things that are loud with a lot of variation and color in them. That is a personal preference and this was a way to create something that will have tiny little pops of color around and it is remarkably subtle. It doesn't feel too busy. Lindsay Lou, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really enjoyed the challenge you suggested, and I am definitely interested in exploring this kind of thing more. I don't have a good knowledge of colors that do wonderfully for glazing off the top of my head. Navy is the one that works so well and I'm usually ha very happy with the results. Black can work really nicely too, but the navy consistently, I think, seems to uh, strike quickly in a very, very wonderful way. But I think I am interested in exploring this as a technique more in the future. And I don't think I would have tried this if I wasn't challenged to combine two things I haven't combined together. So Lindsay, thank you so, so much. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you're subscribed, turn on notifications, and give it a thumbs up. Engaging with the videos is the biggest way you can support the content here. But if you'd like other ways, you can join the Chemnitz Patreon for early access to new content, behind the scenes sneak peeks, and more, though there will be a link down in the video description, or you can go and check out all of the hand dyed yarn in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop that has been featured in my videos. I've been thinking about this technique a little more, and I think that I definitely would do it in this order still, glazing first and then layering the speckles on after, because it does give you a little bit more control over how the speckles are going, or you can see how much they're showing up or not. If I speckled the yarn first and then tried to glaze it, it's possible that the speckles you had were so subtle that you really might not be able to see them at the end, and therefore maybe it might not feel as worth it. So the order of operations is something to keep in mind. But you know what I haven't tried? I have dyed variegated yarn and then glazed it. But I haven't tried glazing it first and then layering brighter colors on top of it. Uh, and I think that that's something that needs to happen. Well, and now I'm off to go think about that more because I am very intrigued. Thank you so much for watching.